Good morning. I am Janet Lenahan, and I have the pleasure of serving as interim provost. Welcome to the 2022 Spring Baccalaureate Commencement Exercises for the School of Health Professions and Human Services, the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, and the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which includes the School of Education, the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, the School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, and the Peter S. Calico School of Government, Public Policy, and International Affairs. Please be seated. Before we begin today, we remind all in attendance to wear masks while they are inside buildings. Graduates, you may remove your mask as you cross the stage and for your commencement photo. Thank you for your consideration in helping keep our community safe and healthy. As part of the foundation of our ceremony today, we gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant native communities who make their home here and throughout New York State today. We take a moment to recognize the original inhabitants of this territory indigenous land which we acknowledge as sacred territory as the land of many tribes, including the Matincocks, the Merricks, and the Massapequas in the miles around us. And now we begin our program with the invocation delivered by Rabbi Dave Siegel, followed by the national anthem sung by Kyla Surjavali, class of 2023. Will everyone please stand in body or spirit? Congratulations, everyone. As we gather here today with our Hofstra family to acknowledge and celebrate the accomplishments of our graduating students, we express our great thanks for allowing us to reach this special occasion. Grant your blessings to the parents, friends, faculty, and administrators that have supported and guided these students each day. And please give our amazing graduates the opportunity to make their dreams come true, the strength and knowledge to help make this world a better place, and the resources to accomplish what we know they are capable of. May these students always be a blessing to everyone whose lives they touch, and may it be your will, merciful God, that these students and all of us always bask in your blessings of health, happiness, and peace. And finally, please make sure they always remember they have a home at Hofstra University. Let us say amen. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the 
please be seated. And now, performing our alma mater is the Hofstra Vocal Ensemble, accompanied by the Hofstra University Commencement Band, conducted by David Soto, Adjunct Associate Professor of Music and Director of Bands. The words to the alma mater can be found in the inside cover of your program. have the pleasure of making some very special introductions, beginning with the chairperson of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, Donald Schaefer. I'm also very pleased to introduce the Hofstra University's deans. Please stand and remain standing until all of the deans are introduced. Not you, the deans. <laughs> I'm going to begin with Warren Fresina, Stuart and Nancy Rabinowitz Honors College, Kathleen Gallo, Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, Mario Murillo, representing the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, Sina Rabati, the Fred DeMata School of Engineering and Applied Science, Daniel Siebel, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Holly Syrup, School of Health Professions and Human Services, K.G. Viswanathan, the Frank G. Zarb School of Business. Please join me in welcoming all of our deans. And representing our faculty leadership, William Caniano, Chair of the University Senate Executive Committee, Elizabeth Florin, President Hustra's Chapter of the AAUP, and Karen Valerius, Chair of the Chair's Caucus. We are also joined by Hofstra's Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer, the Senior Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, and the Vice Presidents, who I'm pleased to introduce as a group. And of course, the person who leads our university. Please join me in welcoming to the podium our president, Susan Poser. Well, hello, class of 2022, and welcome to Hofstra University's commencement. A special welcome and thank you to our commencement speaker and presidential medal recipient, Dr. Bruce Farber, whom I will more formally introduce shortly. 
This is a great day, a great day for you, a great day for Hofstra, and a great day for the family and friends that surround you here. To our graduates, today probably feels like an end of something big, and of course, it is. Attaining a college degree is a singular achievement and indicates that you have come through a time of intense learning in an academic environment, which was also likely a period of personal growth and of growing up. Many of you made what will become lifelong friendships and spent hours and hours savoring these friendships on a daily basis. In these ways, this commencement marks the end of a very distinct time in your lives. As you leave this commencement, you will take with you a world-class education, as well as experiences outside of the classroom that come from completing projects, doing internships, participating in athletics, serving in student government and other student activities, engaging with the arts, and serving the community. I hope that all of this political, cultural, and civic engagement will continue to be an important part of your future. Our collective future as a country and a world depends on this. And having attended Hofstra, you know what it is, and you know how to do it. The idea of commencement is, of course, not just an ending of something big. In fact, the word itself signifies a beginning, a time to commence, a time to take all of your experiences at Hofstra, both in and outside of the classroom, the lab, the studio, and begin again as you move into work, graduate or professional school, or whatever it is that comes next. And like most beginnings, commencement is an exciting time, but also a time of uncertainty. But you are ready to enjoy this excitement and deal with any uncertainty. You have succeeded in getting to this place in your lives, this celebration of educational achievement, having attended college during a global pandemic. This is significant for your futures and will, in perhaps an unexpected way, serve you well. You all understand now something that before COVID, most people learn at a much later age, which is that your life, both your personal and professional path, is not a road laid out in front of you that you find and on which you then take a nice long walk. Life truly is what you make it, and there are things that will happen that are completely out of your control. And it is how you react to those things, how you deal with them, the choices that you make in the face of uncertainty that will determine your path and your success. Most of us, as I said, learn this much later in life, maybe when we have children, or a tragedy in our lives, or some other unexpected event. But you all now already know this, having started college in what was, for most of you, probably a pretty typical way, with pretty typical expectations. But then you had to adapt. You learned at a young age that the one constant in life is change, sometimes unexpected and difficult change. So I hope you see that the pursuit of a good life, no matter how you define it, is not only about having goals and determination and some luck, as important as all of that is, but also about how you adapt to change and the choices that you make within new and unexpected contexts. You have already done that in a most admirable way. And we all know that, of course, because you are sitting here. This bodes so well for your future, and it fills me with pride. So on behalf of Hofstra University, I promise you that we will always be your university. We will remember what you have done, and we will continue to support you. Like you, we will continue to grow in strength and reputation, enhancing the value of your degree. We will always strive to make you proud just as you have and will continue to make us proud. After all, one very good way to measure the greatness of a university is by the success and the humanity of its alumni. And you are all now part of that legacy. So again, 
my heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you. Now I have the privilege of introducing a very special video message from the senior senator from the state of New York, our nation's Senate Majority Leader, and a great friend to Hofstra University, the Honorable Chuck Schumer. Hello, Hofstra. This is Senator Chuck Schumer, and it's my honor to address the faculty and staff, the families and friends of the graduates, but most of all you, the class of 2022. Congratulations. Now, I'm really sorry I can't join you in person, as I do almost every year, but I'm sure with you in spirit. Now, first, a quick word to the parents. As a parent myself, I know how hard it is to raise kids these days and how much you've invested in them. But it all pays off as you watch your son or daughter receive their diploma and become an adult before your very eyes. Congratulations to the moms and dads. And now to the class of 2022. The challenges of the last few years have been truly unique, but so have been our collective response. The fact that we're still celebrating this graduation and not letting COVID stand in the way just goes to show you that New Yorkers won't let anything stop us from honoring what's so important in life. Today, you have earned a degree from a truly fine institution of higher learning, and nothing, nothing can take that away from you. We have a lot more work to do, but little by little, we are seeing signs that life is returning to normal, and it took a lot of working together to reach this point. As Senate Majority Leader, I worked hard to pass the American Rescue Plan last year, which put money in the pockets of families and small businesses who have been hurt by this crisis. And thanks to the safe and highly effective vaccines that I was proud to champion in the Senate, we're getting ready to embark on the next chapter of American history, which you will help us write. Right now, I'm pushing President Biden to forgive $50,000 in student loans, a crushing burden for millions of college graduates around the nation. With the flick of a pen, he could wipe this debt clean and create a brighter future for so many people, including many of you. Now, graduates, my concluding message to you is simple. Right now, it may feel like the future is uncertain. Many of you may not be sure what you're going to do next. But what has been true throughout history is just as true today. That even in times of difficulty, there are always new opportunities, new ways of thinking, of doing things a better way. Our nation is overcoming the pandemic and working to return back to normal. And we will need your help and your courage to rebuild our country even stronger than it ever was before. We must make our society better, and we know we will because you are our future leaders and we have faith in you. So to the graduates, I say once again, congratulations, good luck, and Godspeed. I would like to ask Donald Schaefer, the chair of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, to offer a special welcome. Thank you, Provost Lenahan. On behalf of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, I bring greetings and congratulations to the class of 2022 on your graduation and welcome you, your families, and friends to this celebration of your academic achievement. We are proud of you and all the hard work and determination that you showed to get to this moment in your lives, especially in light of the challenges you faced as college students during the pandemic. Please know that Hofstra will always be here for you as you go forward. You are now part of the enduring bond of the Hofstra family, and we look forward to seeing you in the future and learning about what will surely be wonderful and interesting lives and careers. As I look out at all of our incredible Hofstra graduates and your families and friends, I am reminded of the following quote. Life is not measured by the number of breaths that we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. This is truly one of those moments. 
Congratulations, Class of 2022. It is now my pleasure to present your commencement speaker and the recipient of the Hofstra Presidential Medal, Dr. Bruce Farber. <laughs> Dr. Bruce Farber is the Chief of the Division of Infectious Diseases and the Jane and Dayton Brown Professor of Medicine at the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell. And he is also Chief of Public Health and Epidemiology for Northwell Health. Dr. Farber graduated from Northwestern University's Honors Program in Medical Education and the Medical School with a BS and MD. After a three-year residency in internal medicine at the University of Virginia, he held a fellowship in hospital infection control also at the University of Virginia, followed by a clinical and research fellowship in infectious diseases at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Dr. Farber has served on the faculty of the University of Pittsburgh Medical School and has worked on the staff of North Shore University Hospital and LIJ Medical Center. Dr. Farber has been a consultant to the New York State Department of Health, the National Hockey League, Madison Square Garden, and numerous other companies and groups throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. He has authored more than 50 peer-reviewed papers edited a book titled Infection Control in Intensive Care, and has written dozens of abstracts and reviews. Since the very beginning of this pandemic in 2020, Dr. Farber has provided invaluable guidance to the Hofstra administration that was critical to our overall ability to keep the university open and return to in-person classes in a most safe and successful way. His expert advice provided the guidance that allowed Hofstra University to reopen using a hybrid model in the fall of 2020 when many other universities were entirely online. Since I arrived on campus as the new president last August, Dr. Farber has been exceedingly generous with his time, making himself available to consult with me and our senior administration whenever we requested including weekends and evenings, and generously helping us think through how to navigate the course of the pandemic and the associated and ever-changing national and local public health protocols. It was the combination of his expertise and his accessibility that made us confident that we were always following the science and to the best of our ability, properly balancing the risks. Dr. Farber, the Hofstra Presidential Medal is one of the highest honors Hofstra University can bestow on an individual. For your distinguished medical career, your widely sought after expertise and record of public service to our region and our university throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, your professionalism and good counsel, and your friendship towards Hofstra University, it is my privilege and honor to present you with the Hofstra University Presidential Medal. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <clears throat> well, first I want to welcome all the students, the faculty, relatives, all the people here for this phenomenal day. And I'd obviously like to thank Dr. Posner. I'm deeply honored to have an opportunity to address you today on such an important day. When Dr. Posner asked me if I'd be willing to speak, I immediately said yes. She's been a great steward of this university over the past year, watching the challenges. Dr. Posner, had she been the captain of the Titanic, I can assure you it would not be at the bottom of the ocean right now. <laughs> I also want you to know that I'm a competitive person. So I had to look up some other people, a lot more famous than me, that were giving graduation speeches across the United States that I might be judged against. You know that President Biden is giving an address to the University of Delaware. You know that Taylor Swift is giving NYU. 
you know that Anthony Fauci is doing a triple header. He's doing Baltimore College, Robert Williams College, and Princeton. And interestingly enough, Cape Cod Community Hospital is getting Mark Dural, who if you don't know, is the founder and genius behind Netflix. And you are getting me. A, home go a homegrown graduate of Herrick's High School, not six miles away from here. So, the pressure is on me to do a good job, at least as good as Taylor Swift. <laughs> I plan to make three points with you today. One, roll with the punches. Two, find meaning and purpose in what you do in life. And three, be safe and be smart. So first, roll with the punches. Inviting an infectious disease physician to give this speech requires me at least to say a few words about COVID. I will start off with a quote from the 19th century philosopher Nietzsche, and maybe more well known to this audience from a song by Kelly Clarkson that starts off, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. When you started college four years ago, no one could have predicted that the last two years of your college education would have been marked by a pandemic that affected so many of your life, so many of your experiences. Sports, music, drama, arts, in-person seminars, study abroad, social events, parties, just to name a few. I'm sure some of you in this audience have friends or relatives who have died of COVID because after all, it was the third most common cause of death for the last two years in the United States. And in addition, unlike some other periods of our history, this one occurred during deep division in our country. The pandemic brought out the best and worst in people. It made heroes out of nurses, physicians, and first responders, and countless others who showed up for work during that scary first wave. When there was... despite their risks to themselves and their families. And others chose to ignore the virus and the scientifically proven mitigation policies that did help. I know all of you have lost out and suffered from this experience in different ways. That time cannot be replaced. Those missed experiences cannot be relived. But you are fortunate in some sense that the pandemic you lived through occurred in a time in history when extraordinary research and technology allowed for life-saving vaccines and medications to be produced rapidly. Entire new platforms of the mass production of vaccines and monoclonal antibodies were developed in months, whereas in other times in history, it would have taken many years. I would point out that over four billion people out of the seven billion in the world have now been vaccinated and millions of precious lives have been saved. And the pandemic did make you stronger. We do not know when the next pandemic will occur, but it will happen. And each of you will face unexpected and difficult challenges in your lives. These challenges will require you to change direction, to modify your goals, and to give up on something that isn't working. It's not always a bad thing to give up. And what Nietzsche and Kelly Clarkson were saying is that you will need to be resilient, and you have been resilient. Learning this lesson early on is helpful and will carry you through the ups and downs of your lives. The pandemic also taught you that you must push ahead despite unexpected and even unprecedented challenges. Your diploma and your presence here today are a testament to your ability to persevere in the face of adversity. Life will undoubtedly throw you more curveballs, just as Saint, and just as St. Peter's was able to succeed against all odds in their record-breaking run to the Elite Eight, you too will have the tools and experience to succeed at times against the odds. The pandemic taught us also that many things in, lives, in your lives are out of your control. We don't control the environment. We don't control microbiologic life. And we don't control a lot of other events but we can follow the science and make educated decisions to mitigate against negative consequences when they come up. Point two, find meaning in what you do. 
When my son graduated college several years ago, an English professor spoke at his graduation. And I'll never forget that she said something that stuck with me ever since then. She said, in order for you to be happy in life, you must get away from chasing the four C's. And the four C's, she said, were compulsive, competitive, conspicuous consumption. So what can I tell you about finding happiness in this complicated world? Well, first, there's a difference between pleasure and happiness. Pleasure can be derived from buying things. Clothes, jewelry, a car, house, electronic gear. We all love those things, including myself. But the pleasure you get from those acquisitions is real and great, but it's very short-lived. Within a month after I buy my car, which I'm so excited about in the beginning, it's just a car. And if it starts in the winter and gets me where I want to go, I don't really think very much about it. The same applies to virtually every purchase I've made. Data demonstrates that what you achieve after a certain level in life doesn't materially change your happiness thereafter. Yes, poverty clearly guarantees a difficult and unpleasant life, but wealth does not equate with happiness. The level of wealth required for the happiness curve to flatten varies, but it's not extraordinary. In addition, when you spend your money, you'll get much more happiness by spending it on experiences as opposed to objects and material goods. I can't honestly remember one thing that I bought 10 years ago, but I can vividly remember hiking around the fjords in Norway and in Patagonia and running the, Boston, the, Boston, the uh, London and Berlin marathons with my family. During the pandemic and throughout my career, I've met and given advice to many people of extreme wealth. But these people don't seem to be a whole lot happier than many of the people I meet every day who are not wealthy at all in the places that I work. Happiness, as opposed to pleasure, can be made by finding meaning in your life. Now, how can you do that? First, be productive and enjoy and get good at something you do. Pick your field carefully and get good at it. And it doesn't have to be work. It can be a hobby, community service, caring for somebody, any other interest but you need to develop something that you can take pride in. Two, understand that success is a combination of hard work and luck. Success will also be defined differently by all of you. The harder you work, the greater your chance of finding your own success. And I'm no Tom Brady fan, but as a sixth round draft choice out of Michigan, most would agree that a large proportion of his success becoming the best quarterback in the history of the NFL was his work ethic and determination. In the same vein, I could assure you that if I dedicated every ounce of my energy from when I was born to becoming an NFL quarterback, I would have failed miserably. <laughs> Understand there's a degree of luck in every successful person and if you are fortunate enough to find your own success, which most of you ultimately will do, stay humble and empathetic to others. Next, make meaningful relationships. You don't have to have a lot of friends, and if you do, trust me, they'll come and go. But you do need a few people that you can count on and talk to regularly. Nurture these relationships, work on them, and don't let them go. Like a marriage, they take ongoing work and effort. Be grateful for what you have. It will make you happier. I spend most of my days in hospitals. It can be a rewarding but very stressful place to work. I try to think every day how lucky I am to be on my side of the bed. I see many people a lot younger than me who have serious and often life-threatening illnesses. And don't dwell on the small problems in life. They're just not worth it. Finally and thirdly, be safe. The last point I want to make to this audience is not meant to depress you. It's to motivate you to help your friends and your families. I want you all to be safe because we live in a very dangerous world. Over 100,000 people, young people, die each year of fatal drug overdoses in our country. It's the ninth most common cause of death and by far and away the most common cause of death in the group of people that I'm addressing to you today. Mostly it's fentanyl-based drugs that people don't even know are toxic to them. 
Another 35,000 people, young people in this country, die of suicide, and 24,000 people die of gun violence. These deaths cut across all socioeconomic classes, and each one is a tragedy. I personally know too many families that have been personally affected by these, and particularly drug-related drug deaths. And based on the size of this audience, I'm sure there are people in the audience who also know people who have been struck by this horrible plague that is on our country now. So please, learn how to use Narcan. And when you're in a big group, carry it with you so you can save the life, if necessary, of one of your peers. May, too, is Mental Health Awareness Day. And I think of one of the positives that has come out of the COVID experience is that there is a much greater appreciation and acceptance of mental health and its importance. Learn to intervene if a family or a friend is depressed or anxious. And seek help for yourself if you need it. There is no shame at all in asking for help for depression and other mental diseases. Soon there will be a national suicide hotline with three digits. When I first heard of this, I was skeptical. I said, well, don't most people who you stop from committing suicide just try again under another circumstance? And the data show the answer is overwhelmingly no. 80% go on to live long, healthy lives and get over their depression and never try again. Know that whatever you are going through in a period of down, that somebody else is also going through it too, and you're not alone. I'd like to end this speech by reading the last two paragraphs of one of the best graduation speeches I read in preparation for this talk. And that was from Anna Quinlan's graduation speech to Villanova about 20 years ago. And what she said was, get a life, get a real life, not a manic pursuit of your next promotion, the bigger paycheck or a larger house. Do you think you'd care so much about those things if you blew an aneurysm one afternoon or you found a lump in your breast? Get a life in which you stop and watch how a red-tailed hawk circles over the water looking for its prey, or the way a baby scrawls with concentration when she's trying to pick up a Cheerio with her thumb and forefinger. Get a life in which you are not alone. Find people you love and who love you. And remember that love is not leisure, it's work. Each time you look at your diploma, remember that you are still a student, still learning how to best treasure your connection to others. Pick up the phone, send an email, write a letter, kiss your mom, hug your dad, and get a life in which you're generous. I all you wish you my very best, and certain things with COVID, are, the risk is worth it. And one of them is being here to celebrate your graduation. All the best. Thank you, Dr. Farber, for those inspirational remarks for our graduates. Let's give him another round of applause. And now I would like to take a moment to recognize our 2021-22 Teacher of the Year Award recipients. Excellence in teaching is our highest priority, and Hofstra University prides itself on the quality of teaching that takes place on our campus. It is therefore an enormous honor for someone to be selected as Teacher of the Year. Every year, graduating students select recipients for this singular honor. This morning, we are joined by the recipients of the Teacher of the Year Awards. Please stand as your names are called. From the School of Health Profession and Human Services, Susan Dimitropoulos, Assistant Professor, Speech Language Hearing Sciences. From the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, Kelly McMasters, Assistant Professor of English. And from our Calico School of Government, Public Policy, and International Affairs, Air Ann Berline, Professor of Religion. And from Hofstra Northwell, School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, Amy Roberts, Assistant Professor, Physician Assistant Studies. 
Please come to the podium to be recognized by President Poser. Okay, there you go. And now, to the part of the program you have all been waiting for. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science in Education, and Bachelor of Arts degrees please stand? President Poser, I have the honor to present those candidates from the School of Education, the Calico School of Government, Public Policy, and International Affairs, the School of Health Profession and Human Services, the School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, and the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, who have completed all of their requirements for the bachelor's degree. I join with the faculty and the deans of our schools and colleges in recommending that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and by the regents of the state of New York, and upon recommendation of the provost and your deans and your faculty, I am pleased and proud to confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, or Bachelor of Science in Education as appropriate. You are now entitled to all the privileges and opportunities afforded by your degree. Our heartiest congratulations. While the faculty and administration are very proud of our graduates, in order to maintain safety, we ask that all attendees refrain from touching, including the customary handshake and hugging. You may remove your mask while you walk across the stage. Will the graduates please step forward to be recognized by President Poser, Trustee Donald Schaefer, and your deans. Your names will be read by Mary Banahan, Assistant Professor of Physician Assistant Studies, Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, Anthony Porcelli, Senior Assistant Dean of Communication, Advancement, and Engagement in the School of Health Professions and Human Services, Sylvia Silberger, Chair, Department of Mathematics, Associate Professor of Mathematics, School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics in the Hofstra College School of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and Stacy Zelinski, Senior Associate Dean, School of Education, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Graduates from the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. 
Rosen Crosby. Bryn Riceboard. Jack Plant. Zachary Pena. Juliana Lovino. Victoria Caruba. Shannon Tilkin. Umina Bridget Fox. Deborah Asponti. Haley Dono. Alexandra T. Toronto. Sean Jackson. Julian Wolf. Samantha Winkler. Rachel Arono. Alexandra Caliando. Jamie Baskin. Alma Mulanli. Thank you. Jordan Rigabogan. Caroline Fabian. Jessica Long. Rachel Lease. Ryan Garcia. Amin Umar. Milanki Hirola. Danuka Deutsch. Megan Spreen. Abigail Tepper. Shannon Haiti. Marie Constance Elise. Chelsea Lynn. Veronica Schmidt. Emily O'Brien. Victoria Gelato. Julia Angrisnani. Shane Griggs. Benanokis Petroclos. I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Grant Rufin. Kayla Johnson. Lenz Lewis. Genesis Silva. Natanya Beckford. Randy Marengo. Kabir Lawal. Jade Orth. Cassandra Jilson. Emily Zoto. Mary Toth. Emily Blinder. Aaron Browning. David Ferris. Catherine Maher. Samantha Lavin. Rachel Jovanovich. Kia Connolly Sisk. Shura 
Weiss. Sabrina Remusap. Caitlin Cox. Randall Aziz. Sahar Shafiq. Liba Sandu. Alexandra Obdike. Rachel Seacrest. Hasina Lam Lamusnuri. Alexander Vasquez. Ke Keegan Miller. Amanda Mesmer. Athorn Garrett. Jennifer Giacconi. Sophia Bauer. Star Nasons. Jasmeet Kang. Afsa Sharif. Karina Arasena. Anel Torres Vac Vasquez. Marissa Haas. Tatiana Grossman. Mendy Vasquez. Asia Mayo. Lauren Sager. Andre Rizzuto. Brendan Carapoli. Natalia Ankawiak. I'm sorry. Justin Shaw. Charles Colasanti. Christina Finkenzeller. John Vito. Benjamin is a is a Guar Cortez. Manisha Saini. Sharamista Saha. Aaron Rosner. Alexandra Adredi. Madeline Aspla. <laughs> Nia Atwater. <laughs> Orion Forte. <laughs> Michael Artuso. <laughs> Ellis Craig. <laughs> Avery Rudd. <laughs> Michelle Pavlov. Olivia Kina Ross. Nicole Cullen. Anna Lettera. Joey Perman. Andrew Dutil. Benjamin Cohen. Kylie Cole Walrod. Earl Rice Jr. Mystery Skelton. Michael Mertz. Iman Elzai. Deprira Carr. Joshua Phillip. 
Brendan Sperling. Nirali Rana. Ashwinder Parmar. Pavit Suri. Vivek Anadatta. Sean Suyon Kim. Yechan Lee. Tristan Delaney. Yakini Abu. Antonio Mendez. Ernesto Bertoli. Jessica Hansen. Benjamin Morick. Angela Greco. Amanda Rose Varicchio. Priya Manuka. Sunny Mahmoud. Zachariah Rasarup. Daniel Ubri. Mackenzie Crestool. Whitney Sen. Logan Kelly. Aaron Kenson. Samantha Gong. Catalin Jackal. Hi. Jared Dance. Jake Bordenza. Camilla Grimaldi. Aaron Demick. Akash Deep Akash Singh. Christian Diet. Thomas Zimmerman. Dylan Persad. Nathaniel Huff. Jennifer Sang. And my daughter, Jordan Zalewski. I can't. I can't. Isabel Francisco. Melissa Cabrera. Yaya Odoro. Jennifer Rodriguez. Elizabeth Davia Doff. Diana Baryev. Guinevere Walker. Dion Zong. Chelsea De Barros. Celere Kush. Brenda Luna. Mercedes Jasterzenski. Medina Munoz. Jashani Knight. Jayla Henry. Vanelli Valcourt. Jaquela, Jaquela Brown. Ruchika Kindri. Savreen Rangi. Rebecca Wild. Masha Sulkovitz. Angelica Chrisides. Chrisides. 
Matthew Novella, John Vellante, Yon Yonila Marina, Alia Ali, Casey Curran, Anne Marie Bastoni. Caitlin Tenorio Gravesande? Gravesande. Elizabeth Nolan. Danielle Neves. Niavi. Liana De Chiaro. Christopher Wokovitz. Aaron Sarjo. Ashley Singh, Jason Applebaum, Alex Bowen, Angelo Joda, Judah. Thank you. Michael Aselta, Amelia Cullen. Kyle Lindsay. Evripidus Simonis. Alexa Panturzo. Hallie Friedman. Noah Bayer. Gabriel Corzo. Benjamin Staley. Nicholas Mastriani. Julian Camforio. Jillian Zupito. Tess Licani. Amy Oliver. Caitlin Linden, Leiden. Irene Anastasi. Cheval Soan. Ian Koval. Cassius Owens. Alexandra Thomas. Blair Berlin. Megan Giordano. Michael Schatt. Gianna Bamonti. Adam Burgos. Natia Machacha Vrilli. Machado Trilli. <laughs> Amory Gikas. Jacob Dana. Matthew Rivera. Rasheen Peacock. Ashley Orellana Melendez. Jacqueline Rosales. Christina Singh. Bookie Nawankwa. Allison Diaz Morales. Liliana De Los Santos. Victoria Barbudo. Martelene Joseph. Jareth Khan. 
Arsalan Jamal. Michael Roller. Andrew Patani. David O'Brien. Cosette Shields. Georgeline Jean Pierre. Kunchuk Dunyon. Dinyon. Ines Hernandez. Somaya Peters. Juani Espinal. Yanel Guzman. Jerry Hart. Julia Massa. Daniela Hoffman. Ali Joffrey. Morgan Lalo. Ab Abdurazak Bamu. Caitlin Kennard. Rachel Pau. Carolyn Serzwanka. Connor, Connor Van Straten. Trevor Dowd. Michael McKenna. Algo Sujak. Nicholas Morero. Charles St. Clair. Alicia Egan. Eleanor Flotier. Catherine Pfeiffer. Nicole Reinstein. Justin Farina. John Kennedy. Sumaya Seida. Jasper Anno. Ryan Fowler. Paul Wolt. Alexandra Attila, Attili. Jocelyn Gritton. Nathania Telusma. Melissa Restrepo. Rebecca Whedon. Madeline Lustberg. Jonathan Meyer. Melissa Bronstein. Amanda Doherty. Ciara Negron. Jakes Gamash. Serena Garber. Yashu Perichala. Haley Kugler. Megan Fawcett. Emma Fetterman. Molly Steinberg. Emma Husk. Kira Kemp. Logan Riccardi. 
Maxine Cottrell. Ariana Lowe. Hannah McEbry. Cassidy Fowler. Destiny Dorsmund. Abigail Harney. Amanda Douse. Alexa Smnu. Siobhan Crosby, yeah. Grace McFadden, yeah. Spencer Fowler, yeah. Hannah Perez, yeah. Julie O'Neill, yeah. Amaris Roden, yeah. Devin Kern. Andrea Hernandez, Sydney Zaremba, Zanita Zofia Mawak, Isabella Spinetti, Rebecca Murphy, Evan Shertino. Brianna Sanchez, Emma Topper, Sarah McCarthy, Julia Sylvain, Abigail Hall, Morea Walker, Cassidy Reed. Jade Lord, Elizabeth Gomez, Lauren Wood, Gabrielle Lebeau, Allison Kudla, Charlize Martin. Evelyn Alas Moran, Josette Vial, Atiana Frier, Samantha Mercaldo, Rodina St. Paul, Emily Resnick. Agula Fitzgerald. Margaret Williams. Kaylee Specht. Emily Prunty. Olivia Chalfin. Paige Swinnerton. Lori Toledo. Laura Sanchez. Mandisa Wale. Amanda ja Jacqueline Shore. Catherine Kachkovrov. Christopher Schumann. Jason Lima. Marissa Hops. Gabrielle Pascal. Jaslyn Hinnett. Kaylee Ten. <laughs> Layla Neighbors. Catalina Rosenthal. Eleni Constantinidis. 
Mia Natalizio. Amy Dabro. Alana Lee. Domenico Pensa. Isabel Cara. Gabrielle Cordero. Elisa Mingo. Nicholas Bentley. Junas Lort. Ryan Harden. Alia Menzel. Madison Burns. Megan Fisher. Lily Stavisky. Charlotta Larkin. Mary Fidament. Sarah Choi. Isabel Correra. Nikita Rupnari. Natalia Bechi. Sonia Indurjit. Nia Dalatani. Victoria Delinsky. Madison Storms. Mohammed Rahman. Nikhil Nair. Sair Chowdhury. Vicky Zhu. The School of Education. <laughs> Kerry Conti. Cassandra Korb. Erin Wade. Julia Lavigna. Hannah DeMarco. Jillian Geller. Melissa Valenti. Jenna Skogon. Emily Rush. Christiana Sancori. Alexa Weissman. Jessica Hillel. Gabriella Gentile. Maggie Panico. Sorry about that. Tanya Melnick. Jenna McDonald. Victoria Erdman. Michael Frigno. Daniel Harshoot. Hannah Klober. Brittany Graybeck. Amanda Reese. Melina Forti Fortiatis. Kayla Grace. Tian Colby. Amanda Guerrera. Nicole Gomez Negron. Rachel Pulowitz. Madeline DeAngelis. Jason Lieberman.
And now, the School of Health Professions and Human Services. Kirsten Sikora. Kristen Paradine. Isabella Masucci. Samantha Reyes. Emma Forsyth. Callie Walsh. Isabel Hippolyte. Allison Torf. Bianca Singh. Trinity White. Alexa Jacon. Nicole Goris. Alori Council. Gianna Siciliano. Krista Myers. Abigail Basso. Aaliyah Wood. Shivali Vias. Emily Wang. Madison McEvitt. Amanda Mafucci. Angelina Iopolo. Prince Vatapali. Luke Gruener. Cassidy Duncan. Farah Bakash. Komal Kokar. Michelle Thomas. Adam Desuki. Shannon Bedell. Idalia Saravia. Humaira Ali. Bailey Harris. Katarina Lopresti. Emily Dabenspeck. Isabella Soto. Anna Melgar Giron. Kathleen Reed. Kara Colgan. Our Ozali. Lerome Ball. Lorelai Givens. Cinnamon Powell. Rebecca Chang. Alexis Raviso. Jalen Hines. Liliana Ramsey. Abigail Gallet. Janine Kaywood. Taylor Mugno. Nicole Logan. Haley Badalato. Cheyenne Ruiz. Cameron Perez. Melanie Glaikochia. Fatima Ali. Amelia Barron. Amanda Tamara. Karen Sakta. Emily Palmer. Priya Roy. Valerie Garcia. Brianna Davis. Rosita Morardi. Hannah Buckley. Sean Persaud. 
Juvenessa Powell. Daniela Sanchez. Amani Henderson. Jocelyn Rodriguez. Taylor Bristol. Mason Fendler. Emily Way. Karen Serian. Jacqueline Blaine. Caitlin Liebman. Tian Ahmad. Madeline Appleton. Alexandra Lowe. Benjamin Dulber. Diana Robati Honorato. Amelia Linsalta. Maximo Ramos. Tyler Portelli. Shadi Soleimani. Skylar Cirillo. Kylie Florio. Erin Tierney. Jacqueline Gatti. Timothy Hegarty. Ashley Chicas. Emily Aloka. Grace Watson Carr. Brandon Santos. Jade Brennan. Abby Briggs. Alexander Velez. Brandon Webb. Caitlin Giacone. Victoria Caridi. Emma Hartshorn. Grace Lambright. Hannah Callahan. Jacqueline Gonzalez. Ming Doherty. Amanda Fassbender. Victoria Lisa. Channing Wu. Veronica Barrett. Erin Ward. Valerie Bouchard. Gabriella Polito. Victoria Natale. Teresa Di Blasi. Gabrielle Schroeder. Julia Conif. Janice Peter. Pretty Singh. Hannah Halam. Sophia Gruposo. Alyssa Brucaleri. Katerina Filias. Amy Zoitas. Joey Lynn de Guzman. Grace Katorski. Alyssa Sevatello. Alexander Kubliski. Arthur Chichinkler. Lauren Como. Jordi Blau.
the School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. Andrew Cardell. Connie Saitu. Sydney Collins. Madeline Padlow. Allie Miller. Marissa Wall. Gianna Massey. Dia Schroff. Rebecca Cargill. Priya Kohler. Shiza Ali. Yusra Ahmed. Fatima Kawaja. Amrita Palmer. Andrew Kolodny. Catherine Lim. Scott West. Christopher Chang. Lillian Liu. Syra Phillip. Lauren Johnson. Divya Nair. Zoelle Weber. Maggie Cheng Tsai. Kushampreet Kaur. Serena Lee. Brittany Yi. Ada Tron. Tatiana Shrankaria. Shrankaria. I messed that up. Olivia Espinoza. Isabel Hepp. Nicole Glushenbrook. Glushenbrook. I'm nervous reading you guys. Julia Nature. Sophia Webster. Kyra Donnan. Juliana Contess. Brianna Abreu. Julia DeLeo. Congratulations to all of the graduates. Well, congratulations again to the class of 2022. And to the families and friends of our graduates, the mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, nephews, nieces, cousins, children, spouses, Neighbors, thank you for being here today, and thank you for everything you have done to support these students. Graduates, wait, wait. Graduates, please stand if you are able, turn around, and let's show our appreciation and love for all of the people who helped make this day possible. And let's also 
Let's also take a moment to thank your professors, your mentors and advisor, and Hofstra. <laughs> okay. and, and let's not forget Hofstra staff members, the ones who helped get you to where you are sitting today. Not only your professors by teaching you, but the staff and everybody else by helping you through challenging projects and assignments, supporting you in myriad ways, many of which are invisible in student organizations, athletics, internships, clubs, residence life, dining, campus safety, and so forth. A big thank you to all of them, please. And please remember to share your future accomplishments with us and return to visit to mentor students who follow in your footsteps. We need you now as role models for those coming up because that is what you are. That is what you have become by virtue of graduating today and becoming alumni of Hofstra University. And we need you as alumni and ambassadors for Hofstra to tell the world what is going on here at this most wonderful university. You are now our shining example of all that we do and all that we represent. So once again, congratulations class of 2022 and Godspeed. We have one final order of business. Graduates, to make your commencement ceremony complete, I ask you to move your tassels from right to left to signify the end of this stage of your academic pursuits. Following the commencement, there will be a reception for graduates, guests, faculty, and members of the platform party at the David S. Mack Physical Education Complex that is adjacent to this arena. I ask that the audience remain in place until the academic procession has left the stage. And once again, congratulations, class of 2022.